Hey, welcome people. Welcome, welcome to It Came From Gen X. I am your host, Keith Porter, along with your other host, Michael Skinner, and your other, other host, Brian Fisher. What's going on, my brothers? How are you today? Not everybody at once. Right. <laughs> no. We usually both jump in at the same time. Yeah, I was going to call you by name, but I wanted to hear that dynamic of both of you. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so, so much for that plan, man. Skinner, what's right. happening, bro? Ah, uh, living a dream, as they say. Living a dream. Uh, Glad to be I, here another week with you guys. You're looking good, and I must say, Thank for you. our our reality football fans, uh, we started that three years ago. Uh, this man has come leaps and bounds. I just wanted to tell you, I'm so proud. You were just like the coolest, most relaxed radio guy. Now, when you first started, you were like a deer in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Come a long way, my brother. Proud of you. Fish, what's happening, man? Hey, man, I, I remember when you first came in here and put me on the reality football show. It's like, I, was, I thought I was all cool about that. And then just that the phone camera light turned on, and we weren't live, of course, uh -huh. or anything. And I'm like, I am nervous doing this all of a sudden. <laughs> now it's like, yeah, no big deal. Yeah, I am no well, big deal now. Well. Great uh, uh -huh. family time down in Columbus uh, with a uh, wonderful cousins uh, adam and his uh, beautiful wife uh just reunited their oh, vows right. they got married last oh, year couldn't do beautiful. a family thing yeah and we i love those ceremonies absolutely my, ne my nephew did it with his wife edie uh charles and edie and it was a beautiful thing yeah absolutely and mom's birthday was this past week and we celebrated oh, as well okay. so my That's lovely awesome. mother turned 76 so happy birthday mom i know you're not listening happy to this birthday happy to birthday her. anyways Yes, and uh, my you. mom's birthday is at the end of the month on the 26th. So. Very nice. Very cool. Well, I had a, a, not the week I wanted. Spent most of my days uh, laid up with a respiratory infection. But I'm doing really good now. So uh, looking forward to having a, a, a good week and getting some things done. And I'm going to hopefully fly my drone a little bit. That's my my relaxation go-to move. So anyway, good. Very good. hey, T-shirt time. Okay, so fish is rocking. Oh my gosh, he's walking the Lily Monster classic mm -hmm. t shirt. Lily Monster, the sexiest of the goth monster women. And uh, it is a really, really cool t shirt. And okay. I don't know where Skinner gets these shirts from. Uh, last week was the G.I. Joe dad. This week he has the Stormtrooper Wahoo <laughs> combination. Chief there. Wahoo, that, combo, Chief yeah. Wahoo combo, yeah. So we are from Northeast Ohio for. for our three listeners. <laughs> that, Skinner, that's from Cleveland Tees, right? Cleveland Tees? Uh, I believe was, that is. It very well could be. This was a yeah. gift given to me for Father's okay. Day, I think, one year. I, so I think it is clevelandtees.com. Check it out. So I guess they got now, see, that would be a perfect, perfect gift for Fisher. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. No, yeah. Go, see, go ahead. You want to tell them about my outfit here? <laughs> well, you're your truly here. here police officer if i'm not mistaken yes you got like. that right man. yeah you got that right badge and all baby yeah very but what good. does that tell you that's my side gig you know what that tells us is just run he'll never catch you <laughs> stop stop that's awesome okay stop. that is so true Hey man, all right. So that was the first salvo. Okay, I see what kind of show it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fish, tell them where they can listen. Find us at. All right. Well, you might be listening to us. Might be listening to us. <clears throat> Excuse me. On WMBU.org, Global Internet uh, Radio. Yeah, let me just go from... do this right now for next week. Yep. Mondays from <laughs> seven to eight p.m. Eastern, or perhaps seven fifteen to eight fifteen, or seven seventeen to eight seventeen. Somewhere in there, it's going to be on uh, WMBU dot org. Uh, you might be listening to us whenever you want to on your favorite podcast platforms. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Ask your home assistant device to play the "It Came from Gen X" podcast, and she will play that for you. Find us on Facebook at It Came From Gen X, all one word. All information is there. We put links there and stuff. Email the show, it came from Gen X 330 at gmail.com. YouTube, it came from Gen X. Uh, find our channel there. We're also on Instagram, it came from underscore Gen X. Twitter, it came from Gen X. And TikTok, it came from Gen X 330. All this information is also now found on our link 
Linktree account. Simply type in L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash it came from Gen X, all one word, each word capitalized, and you will get a nice little profile page and all of our links I just mentioned, podcast pages, uh, show information, Facebook, all the stuff I just mentioned, all found there, linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash it came from Gen X. Check us out, like us, share us, follow us. And if you are listening on podcast platforms, give us a rating and review. We appreciate that too. It helps others it. find the show. We got to buy more t-shirts. So we need yeah. to try to yes, get we need something. more t-shirts. That's right. Get something going here. So uh, thanks for your support out there. All right. Thank you, Fish. So let's get this show rocking. It came from Gen X. Hey, we're going to do a little curveball for those who, of you who listen to the show normally. I'm going to go ahead and start the, the ball rolling first with some music and some uh, some sports. And how about let's just get right into it with a little bit of controversy. That sound good? Sounds Absolutely. good to me. Absolutely. We're going to take some people off here today. Probably... Those are the female persuasion. Wait, so, Cooper's not on here, is he? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where's no. Cooper when we need him? <laughs> well, Cooper, Cooper, Coop and his wife Amy are working on a new show right now. Uh-huh. Yes, that's right. Uh, I, I, yeah, right. I saw their I saw their uh, last picture redoing their bathroom. Oh, uh, they, gosh. They've done so much work around the house. And I mean outstanding work, too. Mm-hmm. They're beautiful. So I made the suggestion last week. I said, dude, you ought to get your own. Uh, home improvement show and i should have never said that to him because he's run with the idea so the show is going to be called homey improvement with the coops <laughs> yes that's, that's all right, right. and i won't even tell you the ideas that he sent me so it's, uh, oh boy yeah look for that show coming soon <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right guys let's start off with some sports news here we go Today, or well not today exactly, but the Denver Broncos have recently, uh, I guess you could say made history with the hiring of Kelly Klein. She is the highest uh, female, uh, she holds the highest office in the NFL for any female up to date. She has been uh, hired as the executive director of football operations and special advisor to the GM. We are seeing more and more uh, women. I don't know if the word infiltrate sounds good. It's not going to get invasion, but more and more women uh, get involved in uh, the NFL process. We've seen the first female uh, referee Mm -hmm. a few years ago, who, by the way, man, she's gorgeous. That hat and outfit don't do her credit. And uh, (laughs) we see this today. Now, we've seen uh, hiring in the the, uh, NBA. Uh, one of my favorite uh, players, by the way, with Spurs. But uh, the NFL, fellas, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to women being involved in the NFL. I've heard all the arguments. Um, I had a, an opinion. My opinion changed over the years. I'll get to that in a little bit. But, Skinner, how do you feel about women being involved in the, in the NFL? And I say this because – There are no women playing in the NFL. There's also a move to add women to the NFL. How do you feel about that? Uh, Mixed. I I like the fact that they have referees out there um, from the female persuasion. They have trainers. Um, Just because you're male, female, it doesn't matter. If you've got the credentials as far as a trainer, strengthening coach, I have no problem with that. I have no problem with them being a coordinator. If you know the game of football, you don't have to be a female to have to have smarts or a football IQ, mm-hmm. as they call it. So I, I, I'm okay with it. As far as a a woman getting up between the lines, one of the eleven v eleven, unless it's a kicker uh, that's protected. Mm-hmm. I would even say as far as a freaking quarterback is protected, as way they are. I, I still have an issue with that because the um, you know those men are beasts. Mm-hmm. They're human beasts out there between the lines, and I would just hate to see um, anybody that can't handle the pressures and the hits and the the to 
I don't want to call it bestiality, right. but you know, it just that's, that's a whole such, different. <laughs> dude, that is a whole dude, different story. Dude, but, different <laughs> subject. But when it comes oh to, God. and I Can keep you, coming back to Beast because hey, these guys Fisher, are so. Get him a dictionary, would you? <laughs> but you I know, keep coming the, back to saying Beast because these the, guys are yeah. so strong. So yeah. big, so strong, so fast, mm-hmm. almost unhuman like. And that's why I say that. And I, I just don't see a, the female body being able to do the same thing. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. We're, we're five minutes in and we're already off the rails. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is not what that word means. Hey, you, oh my said, gosh. you said we were going to throw a curveball and I just threw it right back at you. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, and by the way, you really sucked up with that too, by the way. I'll get on you later. Go ahead, uh, Fish. <laughs> Did you guys talk about bestiality on the show? <laughs> today? Yeah, you know, it's like big guys. Yeah, big beasts. Football players. They're beasts. <laughs> Isn't that what that means? I, we're going to have a, a off-camera education uh you know, oh, the, great. The definition of the way. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm here comes the FCC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Way to go, uh, fish. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm with Skinner as far as listen. If you're, I don't care if you're male or female. If you have the credentials to do the job, mm-hmm. then you should have a, an equal opportunity. I don't care if you're male or female. I don't care what color you are. I don't care about any of that stuff. If you have the credentials. And you, you know, and you impress people in the hiring process. Why not be given an opportunity? I think it's terrific. You know, uh, I don't know what else to say. I have a daughter. You know, Skinner certainly has daughters as well. So, you know, I think it's great. I think it's great just for women to see that the women can make it in sports beyond just a uh, commentator, which is still a good job. Don't get me wrong. That's you know, there's very talented broadcasters and, and women in that and that part of it. It's good to see them getting more involved in the coaching and the management. Uh, so I think it's terrific. Keep it coming. As far as maybe playing, if we're getting into that topic a little bit, I think it's a little yes. dangerous. I think it's just something's going to happen. Something's going to get hurt. So I don't know about all that because even if it's completely you know, protected and whatever, someone's going to get hurt just because of the sheer strength and the, the, uh, you know, the, the bestiality, if you will, <laughs> of the entire. No, I'm kidding. No, it just I worry about that part of it. But as far as the job's great. Get them in there. Uh, it's interesting to see what happens. So, Keith, what do you got? Yeah, you deep couple of suck <laughs> I'm so disappointed <laughs> in you two. Okay, look here. Are you like keep uh, women out of football? Is that what you're like? Well, hold on here. Let me just, don't right. you know, don't don't paint me with a broad brush just yet. All okay. Right. All, right. all right. First of all, uh, I agree with the notion that I don't care who you are. If you if you are qualified. Um, for these positions that we're talking about, you know, director of football operations, even mm-hmm. there's a trainer on one of the NFL teams. Um, I, I, I don't want to see anybody denied opportunities. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of men that I don't think should be in a position area because they're not qualified. There's a lot of referees. I, I don't think you should be a ref if you've never played the game. Because I think you might, you can learn all the things there is about refereeing and read all there is about football. But unless you've played and understand all the little nuances and things that are really going on on the field, I don't think you should be a ref. And there's a lot of men out there. I don't think you should be refs. Why we got so many horrible refs? So, um, you know what? The, the trainer, I forget what team she on. I think the Titans. She played football before. She she understands what she's talking about, and I hear she's a terrific trainer. Um. As far as operations are concerned, I just have a hard time thinking that someone that did not grow up in the ranks of football can really, really, uh, truly do that job well, can truly understand where the game's been, where the game's going, what to look for, the game changes. These people uh, in these positions, uh, that's why they have to get rid of all the, the old blood and bring in new so often because the game changes so much. And they got to bring in these these younger guys who have been up on the changes in the game that are better suited for the job. It's the difference between having uh, a, a, a wartime general versus a peacetime general. You know, I, I watched a great movie the other day, The, uh, the Darkest Hour, uh, about, about Winston Churchill. Gary Oldman, great performance. Mm-hmm. And I, I, after it was over with, I did some studying on him. And he became prime minister, did a phenomenal job taking 
uh, Great Britain through World War II. But, you know, after that World War II was over, he was ousted. And this is one of the greatest figures in history. But he was a wartime prime minister. You know, he wasn't a peacetime prime minister. So I don't understand how a person who did not, uh, like I said, go up through the ranks of football can do these jobs as well. But that being said, let's talk about playing football. This movement to get women in, in, in pro football, stop it. It's ridiculous. Now, you guys talked about the safety issues of it. I'm going to talk about something else. It's probably going to tick a lot of women off. You can't play like a man. I don't want to see the game degraded, okay? You got college guys that go into the NFL, and they're shocked at the speed of the game, Mm -hmm. Uh, the Mm -hmm. bestiality of the game. I had to get mine mine in. (laughs) If you will, yes. Yeah, yeah. if you Mm -hmm. will. Uh, they're, They're shocked, and they don't make it. I do not want to see the game degraded. When you see these new leagues come out, you know, Vince McMahon's league and all that, you you got guys who play college ball and some play pro ball. But when you watch it, you see the level of playing is not quite up to NFL standards. Mm-hmm. No, it's so, not. So come on now. You start adding women to that thing, what do you think is going to happen? It's not your fault. It's nothing bad. We're just built different. OK, yeah. we're just built different. So I'm tired of all this. Uh, You know, everything's supposed to be you get it. You get involved with everything. We're involved. No, that's nonsense. Let's, let's be realistic. OK, we're men. You're women. There are major differences. I celebrate those differences. I think mm-hmm. women are the greatest creatures on this planet, but you don't belong in the NFL. Yep. Yeah. Genetics. It's, 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 it's not genetics. It's just, uh, just not even genetics. It's just the. Uh... Physical yeah. structure. A whole, yeah. whole so, lot yeah. of men don't belong in there either. So it's just the way yeah. it is. So anyway, yeah. thanks for your input, fellas. Um, I wish uh, Kelly Klein all, all, all the all the luck in the world. I hope she does a great job and and and, and, and impresses and inspires a lot of women to follow her. And, you know, uh, well, just inspire them to do whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. So why we are in sports? Um, for those of you who have listened to the show the past few weeks, we have done or I have done what was currently in the news. And today is the first day we're going to try something new. Um, it's going to be, I'm going to do a feature story each week, uh, either in the world of sports or in the world of music. It might not be current news, but it'll be a topic that we can talk about related to the Gen X factor and uh, get some good feedback on. So today, guys, my feature story today is about equal pay in sports. Um I don't know if you guys have followed the story. There has been a major movement in the WNBA talking about equal pay. Mm -hmm. Uh, The WNBA. What's that? Oh, sorry. (laughs) Oh, oh boy. Another shot by Mike Skinner. Boy, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so I want to do a little bit of reading real fast. Um, this is a story called We Didn't Back Down, how women's basketball players scored a major win for equal pay. And I'm going to read the whole thing. Let me cut down to here. The U.S. women's national basketball team, this is the national basketball team, is mm-hmm. poised to make history in Tokyo this summer as it aims for a seventh straight Olympic gold. Now, that's still. Let me skip some more. Uh, the WNBA. Uh there's a groundbreaking agreement that would enable players to earn up to a hundred thousand dollars uh, to a tier training camp. Oh, this is this is still the U.S. Olympics. If the U.S. Uh, for the U.S. team, okay, that's the Olympics. Let me go back. Uh, WNBA in separate win of equal pay front. WNBA players have negotiated a new contract that now allows top players to more than triple their salaries. Uh, both Sue Bird uh, and Aguba K. Oh, she's one of my favorite players, are taking steps to close the massive pay gap between professional female and male basketball players. With the average pay last year for a WNBA player around $116,000 and the men's average $7.5 million on average during the current season. Now, let's call it like it is. This should have nothing to do with male or female. Okay. But there's reasons why all the men on the pro bowlers tour don't make as much money as NFL players. Okay. Mm-hmm. And got nothing to do with male or female. The, in, the, the NBA averages $65 million just in revenue each year, mm-hmm. where the WNBA averages 
I think six point five million in revenue. This Rick is a matter. Dirt tells the whole story. That's the whole story. Okay, I don't know where they think that money's going to come from. Now, in all fairness, I really let's get on some of the outside sources here, like shoe companies. I don't like the fact that where's the Sue Bird shoe? You know, where's the uh 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 where's the uh uh Aguma K shoe? These these are some fantastic players in the WNBA. Where's the uh, Diana Taurasi shoe? You know, mm-hmm. you don't see. I think they should get a little bit more uh, fairness and more publicity like that. But as far as equal pay versus the men, you got to generate the money. LeBron James himself coming to town will pack an arena four times mm-hmm. over than the WNBA crowd. Yep. It's just star power. Now, mm-hmm. yeah, push these girls farther, promote them more. I want to see all that. But you got to do the revenue to earn the salaries, plain and simple. Fish? Yeah, I agree with you. It's just, it just comes down to dollars and cents. I agree with you. It's like if you... If the if the product draws people and they're paying to watch and they're paying to go see it, I don't like you say, I don't care what it is. Then if there's a profit and there's money to be made, then yes, may you should as the owner, you know, spend more of your profits on your star players to continue the product coming or going right mm-hmm. so you know continue the revenue i guess i'm trying to say right so, right but you're right if the revenue is not there then it's simply not there it's not the women's fault they're playing the best they can it's just a different game like you say i'm sure there's a lot around promotion and all that stuff they can do it better with but yeah i mean so, I, t- take the sex out of it like you say just you, you gotta earn the revenue to make right. more now, money period let's broaden this a little bit let's leave the WNBA and talk about sports in general now mm-hmm. there are some areas that just ain't right okay and i want to particularly focus on world cup soccer okay the women's team as far as i'm concerned they ought to be making more than the men's team Okay, you got the men's team that haven't uh, won a World Cup since 1994. You got the women's team who have won World Cup 91, 99, 2015, 2019. They won gold in 96, 04, 05, 2012, and eight gold cups. We know the names, Carrie Lloyd. We know Hope Solo. We know Abby Wambach. We know uh, uh, Mia Hale. We know Alex Morgan. We know Morgan Rapino. We know all these names. I can't tell you one player on the men's team. When's the last time you seen a commercial with a men's soccer pl- uh, World Cup player? The right. women in this category, it ain't about sexes, but the women's team got it going on. They ought to be get paid just as much, if not more, than the men's right now. So that's what it comes out to. Go ahead, Skinner. Uh, I think you guys hit it on the head. First of all, it's what's the league or the organizations? What kind of revenue are they generating with these particular athletes? And I'm going to say athletes. I'm not going to say female or male athletes. It's mm-hmm. just let's just do athletes. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about you know women's soccer versus men's soccer. What's what are they doing to promote the athletes? What are they doing to promote and generate revenue so they can pay these athletes? Right. Well, the NBA, oh, we know oh, what they on. do. I, I want to cut you off right there. You're making a great point. Let's make sure there's a the difference between fairness and promotion versus equal pay. Well, yeah. Well, there, there you go. And you brought that up with the, the few female athletes that wear their shoes. Well, mm-hmm. shame on Nike. Shame on Adidas. Shame right. on, you know, mm-hmm. Under Armour. Right. Why are these athletes not being promoted like the male counterparts? Yeah, because are? if I list my favorite 10 uh professional basketball player four or five of them are women okay Just good for honest. you now I, I made the joke before you started is what is the wnba right i don't personally know the league i know what it is but i mm. couldn't name one person all that's playing right now it's just not something that fair enough int- it's not something that interests me and i blame that league for not spiking the interest for mm. the average person like me I, you know, you name an NBA player, I'll probably know what team it's on mm-hmm. for the most part, but that's because the NBA is constantly right. there. You know, it's the right. way they promote. So it's the dollars and cents. And that was the first thing that came to mind. Like Fisher said, when you first brought the story up, $7.6 million per athlete on the NBA side versus 115,000 
That's shame on the league. That's not shame on the, no, the no. difference uh, between six, sixty-five million. No, no, no. I'm talking about the the salary per. Athlete. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, right, right, okay. Seven point five versus one hundred sixteen grand. That's shame on the league. Mm. I, I I don't know how else to put it. You want yeah, your athletes should... to get paid like the the male counterparts do? Start generating some revenue. Start generating some business to get these athletes out there in people's homes. Right. Go ahead, Faith. They should promote it to say, do you want to watch something other than guys shooting three pointers? <laughs> Check out the WNP NBA. <laughs> watch like passing. You see some people that know how to dribble. <laughs> right. Yeah, you want to see what a pick I'm not and even roll kidding. is? Let's watch these guys. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not even kidding around. It's like they they no, play a more traditional game right. of basketball with the I, pick and well, rolls I like it and everything because else. of fundamentals. I get to mm-hmm. watch fundamental basketball. I yep. personally got interested in the league when it first started. There were some players that I follow uh, from the beginning. Uh, Lisa Leslie, uh, some of mm-hmm. these guys that helped form uh, form it of uh, the the, uh, the league. Uh, watch Houston be the first dynasty. When the league was formed, they won four back-to-back-to-back uh, championships. Um, <clears throat> so I've just been a fan ever since. And there are some phenomenal college players that I love True. come out of UConn, come out of Stanford, and they're just lighting the WNBA up, right? They're just amazing to watch. So I've, I've been a big fan ever since. And and I think those names should be pushed just as much as, as, as we see the guys. And I think I think the revenue will be there. You know, mm-hmm. I think it'll, it'll be there, so. All right, good stuff, guys. Um, hey, anybody listening to the show, you got any comments you'd like to send in? Please, we are welcome. Welcome those comments, and we, we'll talk about them on the show. All right, so guys, let's go over to music news today. Time for some music. And I'm just going to do a couple of this day in music news because uh, this is really relevant to us, okay? This day in, in, in uh, two years ago, 2019, uh, we lost an Ohio legend, uh, Eric Moore, a uh, singer for the, the rock group, The Gods. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, The Gods have one of the more famous uh, rock songs uh, in <laughs> history. Even though for Northeast Ohio, he died of bladder cancer at the age of 67. Uh, they got as big to open up for Kiss, Keep Trick, Judas Priest, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, and Iggy Pop. Uh, I, I knew The Gods. Uh, I knew Eric Moore. I've had some funny, funny encounters with him. Some stories I can't tell. Ramones. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crossroads, yeah. man. Yeah. Man, I, we had to take this guy down to uh, St. Thomas Hospital because he drank and did too many drugs in the dressing room. And he's down there running around with his butt out in the gown asking for a cigarette. <laughs> we had to chase him around the emergency room. <laughs> oh, he's, st- but he's still singing got- a rendition of The Gods of Rock and Roll Machines ever since he passed away. It's still going. Still going, still going. This, so, yep, all these years, still going. Yeah. Yep. So, you guys have any? You know, what do you know about the gods? You've had any experience with them? You ever seen them, Skinner? No, I actually I don't have any experience with them whatsoever. Um, I knew the name, but if you told me he was with the band the Gods, I wouldn't have known. But I do know the name. Okay. Unfortunately. How, yep. how about you, Fish? Buddy and I, Jim Cunningham, saw them at Ramones one night. That was a, lot, a fun okay. night. Yeah, they were kind of a train wreck, but the uh, the guy yeah. the the signature song, the God's Rock and Roll Machine, was was a lot of fun. That, we paid yeah. to go see that. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, they fun were entertaining. Song. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the guys in mind of my band, Skillet Johnson, was actually in the Gods. Oh wow, uh, geez. Yeah. So, um, my tell you a couple quick stories. to Eric Moore. The first time I booked booked them at Crossroads Premier Right Club here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, Tim Owens, uh, the Judas Priest fame was was uh, was a frequent uh, visitor there. But anyway, um, the first time I booked the gods, everybody told me about this guy Eric Moore, so I was ready for him. He walks in the club, big old cowboy hat on, got that black eyeliner, that big belly with his t-shirt cut up and cowboy boots, and he slosses over to me, and he looks at me up and down, and his first words to me was. My sister married a N word. <laughs> and I looked to my left and I looked to my right and I said, Come here. I said, Don't tell nobody, but so did mine. <laughs> That's good. Man, he cracked were... up laughing. Yep. And we, we were friends ever since then, man. But this <laughs> this guy's he was a hot mess. Man. He was a hot mess. Okay. Well, rest in peace, Eric. Also, guys, this day in music. Donna Summer died. Mm. Uh, 
I did not know this till I read this today. <clears throat> Donna Summer died um, from toxic particles from nine one one that were in the air from nine eleven in New York City. Oh, I didn't know that. I, oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, hmm. I did not either. Toxic particles got in her body and in her lungs, and hmm. she died. Donna Summer had five Grammys, six American and Music Awards, three multi platinum albums. Uh, major hits like Hot Stuff, Love to Love Your Baby, and I Feel You. Guys, growing up, I was a huge Donna Summer fan. She was the voice of of modern disco, if you will. Sure. The yep. disco era started, and then she became like a, like a modern disco. Uh, there was It was like disco borderline pop, but I thought she had a great voice and a great sound, and I, I, I loved her songs. Fish, Donna Summer. Queen of Disco. There you go. Yeah. Great, there you go. Great music, great voice, and it wasn't even something she felt comfortable singing all the time. As far as really? she didn't, hurt, it was her. She just didn't. She was more uh, conservative, but uh, oh, she sang okay. some of the songs that. that she sung. Right, she was encouraged to do so for, you know, for her career basically. So it made, it made uh, her the money, honey. Anyway. Yeah, it sure did. So uh, yeah, I like uh, definitely a big Donna Summer fan. Yeah, that's a heck of a uh, thing going from something you didn't want to do to the label Queen of Disco. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's wow. Fish, I mean Skinner. Sorry. Uh, you know, as a kid, she was as a young man growing up in my teenage years with with her. She was very easy on the eyes, and then you had that voice. She had a great voice. Mm-hmm. Hell, yeah. she could sing the freaking mm-hmm. phone book mm-hmm. and entertain people. That voice of hers. So um, I enjoyed. I wasn't a big disco fan per se, but you know, I enjoyed her music that made it to the radio. I really, cause um, I really just enjoying it. Imagine you with some bell bottoms on and some big colors. Yeah, no. And doing yeah, this. I, what you? Well, my, my father had the eight track tapes. There was, it was the Boston's, the foreigners, the meatloafs, the, okay. you know, <laughs> there was no disco in my house. It was, no it went from one ex- <laughs> yeah, it was, it was that with my dad to my mom with the, uh, George Jones, Conway Twitty, um, Johnny Cash. So th- that was my upbringing. And then I, somewhere in the middle, I became a metalhead. And my mom and dad both scratched their heads going, What the hell? Where did you come uh, that's from? That's nothing. My upbringing, <laughs> in- my upbringing in- included uh, uh, um, the Hawkins family, Shirley Caesar, <laughs> wow. Andre Crouch. So how I got to be a metalhead, I don't, I don't know how that happened. So you think your parents were scratching their head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom's still scratching her. So <laughs> I'll post okay. a picture, of Keith, on the page. Uh, Skinner no, and I you went won't. to. No, 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 not you. I, we put. I put. I post the picture. Skinner and I went to a seventies party with uh, Cunningham. I mentioned. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Pretty yeah, good seventies okay. outfits. I'll post that. At some That'd be point great. Here, okay. Yeah, quick story. Okay. Not, we went. We went to a seventies party that was a bomb. So mm-hmm. we're like, okay, it's like eight o'clock at night. I'm like, what are we gonna do? So we went to. Uh, Ramones. Um, so we went to Ramones. No, we went to Club um, Energy. Club Energy. Yeah, at the and time. It was we Ramones, were in yeah. our full seventies gear, and we had one of the best nights that we had together uh, to memory. Um, yep. We were the star of the bar that night. <laughs> I'll bet you were. Yep. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm going to close with this story and kind of hand the ball off to Fish. Uh, you guys helped me out with this story. But uh, this is just talking about uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and this, the major snub uh, of artists as we're talking about becoming metalheads, uh, something we know about. Um, major snubs going on with uh, a classic artists such as, and when I say classic, I mean somebody who's been around a long, long time and has done it all. They got the numbers. And uh, they got the album sales. And I'm talking about groups like uh, Iron Maiden. And what's who's the other one that got stopped there? Rage they, Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine. And last so, year, Judas Priest last year yeah, didn't get okay. in. Well, yeah, them so I, too. Now, Rage is to me is one of the most important bands of the last 20 years. But let's just focus on the Iron Maiden. Do you think it's because they are a metal act uh, and then Judas Priest that they got snubbed? Fish? Whoever is voting... Okay, mm-hmm. I they just it, they don't have, in my opinion, they don't have the right understanding or appreciation of that type of music. I totally Nothing agree. against it. So, who got in this year, performer wise? Tina Turner solo, right. Carol King, The Go Go's. We talked about that on the show. Mm-hmm. Jay Z, Foo Fighters, oh. and Todd Rundgren. Not saying none of them are worthy. Right? right, we all talked about this off camera, oh, but okay, okay. Before they, you there's get not that. enough representation of the 
uh, and, and heavy metal right. acts that aren't the super mainstream, like the ACDCs and the Guns N' Roses and stuff, Metallica, stuff and I like that. I think that's what the, the solution should be. The committee needs to add someone who mm-hmm. is an extreme, been around long time metalhead who right. understands the importance of these bands that are might not be household names, but are that huge. You want to right. talk about Iron Maiden. This band is worth over $150 million just as a band. Yep. Uh-huh. They've been around since the 70s, and they still, you know when the last time they went on a world tour? This year. Right. Yeah. They're right. traveling the world. They have their own plane. And in some countries, this is crazy, but they are a religion. I've seen it. Sure. I've seen it. The best um, shows I ever saw. Yeah, unbelievable shows. Yep. So uh, it's really sad. Now, Rage. Rage is a very, very important band. Uh, I, they need to be in there as well. Uh, but they don't even compare. When you talk about mm-hmm. album sales, longevity, no. and influence, like Maiden did. Yep. And when you say somebody who understands, so you need somebody who understands the uh, how Maiden has affected musicians growing up in sure. that genre. You know, uh, Steve Harris. Everybody wants to be Steve Harris on the bass. The twin guitar attack, the, the harmonizing. We never heard none before other than a band like Judas Priest. Let's go mm-hmm. ahead, Skinner. Well, you bring up bands like Rage Against the Machine. They grew up listening to Iron Maiden. I mean, yeah. and we're talking about both these two particular bands getting wow. snubbed. Tom mm-hmm. Morello and the guys there from Rage. I wasn't a big fan when they first came out. They grew on me, and now that I that I'm you know 20 years in listening to them, I absolutely love their music. And they were, I was I sold the see, first note. <laughs> I could see where their influence and how important they were to today's music. Yeah. Yep. Uh, did you want to go over the list, Skinner? Those are, are we fish? Those are getting in. Yeah. The, the, so again, Tina, we was mentioned already. Then early influence awards, and these are separate than performers. Uh, Craft Works, Charlie Patton, Gil Scott Heron. I'm just not familiar. Yeah. Uh, Musical Excellence Award, LL Cool J. Okay. Billy Preston, sure. And Randy Rhodes. So shout out to you know Randy Rhodes. You know, certainly one of the iconic guitar players uh, in right. our generation uh-huh. who was Billy tragically Preston, uh, Randy killed. Rhodes should have been in. Yep, absolutely. And then another award, the Amit Ertigan Award. Sorry, I'm not familiar with what it is. Clarence no. Avant. I'm, again, I'm sure all mm-hmm. worthy, but the performers is where we believe that, you know, certainly they didn't quite get it right with edging yeah. out Iron Maiden. So, yeah. yep. Really sad. Okay. All right. Well, with that being said, Fish, let's take it away with some pop culture. All right. Skinner, actually, why don't we go to you, if you don't mind? We'll go to yeah. Skinner and do the I world news. Fish. No. Yeah. <laughs> you did say fish, and he's saying skin bone. So yeah, there right. you go. And we're about All 36 right, minutes here, guys, just so you know the time. Don't get right. uh, we're going to do uh, <laughs> let's scale it back here and uh, talk about the Israeli uh, Gaza Strip uh, conflict that's going on over there. Oh, boy. Uh, it's, Heading into it actually started last week, when, the day that we recorded for last week's show. Uh, it's heading into a second week as of today. Uh, and the root of this violence is a dispute over East Jerusalem and the Palestinians that have um, been there for years. They've been rooted out of that area, and families from East Jer- these families are being taken from East Jerusalem and shipped out. And that's where the Hamas, I think is what they call it. They're the ones that are upset about the Palestinians mm-hmm. getting moved. Problems that we're having is, is that the Israeli army has been throwing missiles across the, you know, through all this, and they don't care who their, who their targets are. Mm-hmm. Women, children, civilians, they're just taking out wherever they can. And that's where, me as a fellow, uh, as a veteran of the United States uh, Air Force, I have a huge problem with that. I understand that there's conflict going on, but you've got to be a little bit more choosier, a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? But today's technology, you can hit a dime from 300 yards out mm-hmm. and not touch anything else around it. So right. what is going on over there? I don't know if you guys are familiar with the story, if you have any opinions on it, but uh I, I feel for the these families, I feel for these people over there because they're getting put in the middle of this 
fear and further their lives, and they shouldn't be. Wow. Well, yeah, I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. It's just it's it's a it's a terrible thing. I mean, it's you know, you you wonder if the United States is going to have to get involved in some of that. I'm not sure. I think we're sort of stepping back and uh, continuing to observe that situation. But you're right. When you get to, when you're just firing off uh, ammunition toward civilian areas without really targeting anything, to your point, that's that's what takes it to a whole other level. So hopefully, it's it ends soon or others could have to get involved and hopefully doesn't escalate into some larger war. Mm. Uh, what do you think? Well, yeah, I've been uh, following the story a little bit. Um, I want to say first and foremost, I am a, a, a support. I won't say support, but uh, I guess in prayer, I do support uh, Israel. Um as far as lobby missiles in civilian areas, I, I, I that's unnecessary. I don't support that. Um, I, I wish that wasn't the case. But however, this uh, Israel Palestinian thing's been going on for so long. We grew up listening to them fighting over the Gaza Strip uh, for years. Um, me being a, a Christian, it, it goes all the way back to uh, to. Uh, Ishmael and Jacob. Um, that's basically who this is. It's Ishmael and Jacob, uh, Israel Palestinians. They the brothers fought, separated, and the, the nations grew up around them, hating hating each other ever since. Um, if you want to read how this all got started, you know, go in your Bible. It's a fascinating uh, story of how this got started, it's still going on today, just for them two brothers. Um, that being said, uh, all I'm gonna say is this. I'm going to share a quick story with you that'll that'll sum this up for you. Uh, I used to work for a Palestinian. Uh, he was one of the nicest people I've ever known. He was so good to me, gave me anything I wanted. He gave me a car, and uh, he, he was just a great man, and he loved children. Anytime kids came in the office, he'd give me a wad of money, go across the street and buy them this and buy them that. Great guy. And one day, I asked him, I said, hey, what's this stuff with you guys in Israel, man? And he kind of froze, and he turned and looked at me, and his whole demeanor changed. And he said, I'll put it to you like this, Keith. He said, you know how much I love children, don't you? I said, absolutely. He said, if I had the opportunity to blow up a busload of Israeli children, I consider it an honor. And I got chills. Wow. The look on his face. This is how deep this hatred runs. And all I can say is, uh, you know, my Bible teaches us Christians to pray for peace in Jerusalem. Um, and, and that includes Palestinians. If you're praying for peace in Jerusalem, that means it has to be peace on the other side, too. I don't want to see none of these people constantly going through the state of war, families being bombed and lost. I hate all of it, but... Uh, I, I just think we just need to, to, to keep praying. Uh, there are some things that are going to come to pass because it has to, but uh, we need to pray for both nations. Well said. Yeah, well said. <laughs> so, uh, now, you know, after I say a moment with, with this, and uh, I do hope for peace in that region because it's been way too long. It's been way too long. So, okay. But mark, 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 mark words. So that is where World War Three is going to generate. Oh, without question. We've been yeah. saying that for years. Yeah. Just waiting for the big one to to, to take off. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Uh, pray that it never happens, <laughs> but I think it's inevitable. Unfortunately, it's inevitable. So my second story is called High Meat, quote unquote. H-I-G-H-M-E-A-T. It refers to any meat that's been stored untreated for months or even years until putrid. Oh, I thought that's when you throw your bologna in the air, but go ahead. Yeah, right. <laughs> when eaten, this past its prime protein induces euphoria like a Neolithic narcotic. Stop hmm. it. Kids are getting high off of meat that should have been thrown away months and years ago. Oh my gosh! What is going on? So is it, it is that is that what it is? Is it's a thing? So people are 
It is the this. newest trend, and you know we've got our Tide Pods and we've got <laughs> sniffing glue when we were kids. Now these this guys is a, are. E- this, this is, is a Gen X millennial story right here, buddy. <laughs> this is perfect. Listen, if you want to get high off eating meat, have my sister Gloria's meatloaf. I tell you what, <laughs> you'll see some bitches then. But oh my gosh. I don't understand. You know, there are, I am not in any shape promoting getting high. Let's make that very clear. Okay. But there are much more enjoyable ways of doing it. No, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really? Right. You don't have to eat bacteria meat. <laughs> Fish, have I, you ever heard this? <laughs> no, never heard anything like it. it. It's interesting, though. It's just the, the, all the things that people do to try to get a buzz. It's pretty amazing. So, you know we what? Get out there, kids. Stupid. If you really want to get high, some kid down the street <laughs> has some weed. I almost guarantee it. You can find it if you ask around. No. Somebody's got it. Somebody can get it. It's not going to hurt you like eating uh, It, it came from Gen X does not promote yeah. drug use. Brian That's Fisher right. is no longer That's, with this That's... program. <laughs> so, you know, Mar- actually, uh, kind, of, kind of tied to that, though, Keith, I heard Marcy sometimes feels euphoria from time to time, if you will. No, right. no, 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 baby. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. That that meat over there ain't high. That's good stuff there, baby. <laughs> so I, I, last uh, week, the story came out, and Marcy heard it actually on XM Radio, listening to uh-huh. the Turbo Channel, Channel 41, uh-huh. which is the 90s yeah. and 2000s rock. <clears throat> She's like, yeah, did you hear about this Kids are getting high off of putrid meat. I said, no, that's not a thing. So I kind of let it go. And then she's, she talked about it again this week and she goes, you ready for the show? And I'm like, yeah, I got to find that story. And sure enough, when I put in, I put it in for that story and boom, right there, there's actually a video on YouTube. If you put in Google this thing, there's actually videos talking about how you can get the meat to this particular, this particular First of all, Fish, I just want to clear something up. I was high after I had Skinner Salisbury steak, but that's because it was so good. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, look here, man. You know, I don't want to just keep uh, kicking it on millennials, whatever, but can we just stop being stupid about everything? You know what I'm saying? You know, when we were kids, we, we got, got some weed. We might experiment with, experiment with some acid, you know, we drank a little bit, but this is just ridiculous. This need to get so high that you're biting human flesh, you're, you know, this stuff they got down in Florida right now is really, really scary. Uh, just turning people into zombies. Uh, just stop <clears throat> the stupid stuff. Right now, you can't even hardly buy decent drugs because they're laced with everything. And I don't want to say decent drugs because it's all bad. I don't promote drug use at all. But you know what I'm saying here. You're eating bad meat. You're taking Tide Pots. Get a life, people. That's right. That's right. Your parents out there have no idea how much vodka is actually in those bottles. They don't know. They're never going to know. They're never going to catch it 30 years later. There you, you go. You, pull, know, pull we, back you know what water, we did for Euphoria? Fine. You know what we did for Euphoria when we was kids? We held our breath and, uh, and people pushed our chest against the tree for sixty right. seconds to let us go. Remember that? That's Lord. how we got euphoria. But no, I don't remember that. Yeah, you don't. So nope. one last thing I gotta say is stop getting high on putrid meat and go get a job. <laughs> oh, you hey, kids, yeah. can we talk about that for a minute uh, while you're talking? Is your subject? Uh, you know, I was gonna bring that up, and I'm like, man, we could spend a whole hour talking about this. Real, real quick. Last week, I stopped at the Dollar General on my street at 4:50. You they said start, this last week. Okay, I told you about that. Okay, yep. all right. Mm-hmm. So, just for you who didn't hear it, they mm-hmm. closed at five because they didn't have the people to work. Mm-hmm. I went to a Circle K down the street at eight o'clock at night. The doors were locked, and there was a donut truck in the parking lot. Couldn't get in. They were like, they told us they were closed, so they didn't have nobody to work it. Friday night, my family went to Applebee's for dinner. I walked in. There was only maybe 10 people in there. One whole side was empty. They told us it would be a 35-minute wait. They would text me. I looked around and said, you're kidding me, right? They said, we don't have anybody to work the entire side of the restaurant. Nobody wants to work. This is a sad state of affairs for this country. 
I don't understand uh, the, the lack of work ethic. Uh, I, you know, th- all this uh, give kids trophies for showing up and, 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 and all this other crap, all the stickers. Now we got a generation that want to get paid but not work. It's just ridiculous. I started working. I was 13 years of age, and I still had a great, awesome childhood. Did everything every other child did. But this is really sad for this country. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. I, I'm going to say this, then I'm going to get into pop culture. Mm-hmm. I, said, I said it last week, and I'll say it again here. It's some people are doing that probably out of laziness, no question about it. Mm-hmm. Some people are doing it out of necessity, though, because they will, mm-hmm. they're not. They don't have the experience or the skill Mm -hmm. to make the type of money they're making now. Mm -hmm. They're going to write it out as long as they can, either out of necessity or otherwise, as long as they possibly can. So until the benefits run out, then it's going to continue. And I hope that some employers step back and make some things more and some and some have some have made uh, you know wages and things a little bit more enticing, a little bit more so easier. So we'll we'll see. It, it'll all get back to normal at some point, and unfortunately, you're going to have people that's got, going to have to, out of necessity, go back to two, three jobs to make the same yeah. type of money that they're making on right. unemployment and, and, and tiring themselves out. Who need need the benefits because there's so many that do. If you're yeah, if you're taking advantage of it, that's I agree with you. That's wrong. You can, there's no way to tell. So, but it is it is a it is. To my opinion, a little bit of, a little bit of both. So. We're going to get into a little bit of pop culture. Pop We've got about culture. Uh, nine, ten minutes left. Mm. Uh, we did have a passing uh, of a fairly well-known actor, it's certainly from the 80s, uh, Norman Lloyd. Actually, yeah. 80s, and 80s and earlier, I should say. But he was pretty prominent in our time on St. Elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll post a picture and a video and all that type of stuff. But you, you'd know who he was when you see him. But he was on the show at the, at the time. He was yes. uh, kind of an elderly, gruff uh doctor he Great also voice. had a lot yes absolutely you know well a very good actor he had a lot of credentials he was in some earlier uh hitchcock movies mm-hmm. uh let's see here. he was the villain who plummets off the statue of liberty in 1942's saboteur saboteur excuse me directed by mm-hmm. hitchcock and he was also in a spellbound in 1945 he was also in the southerner charlie chaplin's limelight dead poet society uh, with Robin Williams, in her shoes with Cameron Diaz, and Gangs of New York that. with Daniel Day mm. Lewis. Mm. So, uh, definitely a great career. So, rest in peace, uh, Mr. Lloyd. And I other, was, oh, no, ahead, I, please. I was just going to say, uh, I was going to say that I know him uh, most famously from Dead Poets Society. Yes. And he was a, that one of those actors. He didn't get well known until he got older. And yeah. he got he got typecast a lot because mm-hmm. he was such a strong character. He was the older, educated gentleman. Uh, yeah. He had this phenomenal voice and accent, and in almost all his roles, he were like the, was like the same character. So, a uh, great great actor. Hate to see him go. Yeah, absolutely, Norman Lloyd does. Uh, Kenner, any thoughts? Yeah, no. That you just reminded me. He yeah, that's where I knew him mostly was from Dead Poet Society. I didn't put two and two together. What a <laughs> great movie. Uh, he was great, in, and I watched St. Elsewhere, too. It was a little bit ahead of me as uh, far as timing. I was a little bit younger than you guys, obviously. I'm about three years behind you. But, yeah, he had a great voice, great actor, and you were right. He did get typecasted because he was a much older gentleman. But uh, if you haven't seen Dead Poets Society out there, make sure you watch that movie. That's one of those that you cannot go, can't go through your life and not see. Yeah, he did some great commercials, too. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Sure did. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, kind of on the same note as Passings, uh, we have a few, we have three major shows, current shows, that are and have announced their final seasons coming up with the next seasons uh, next, uh, you know, next year mm-hmm. or so. Uh, this is Us, Blackish, mm-hmm. and the Ellen DeGeneres Degenerous show. Certainly, this is us and Blackish. These are certainly well known um, uh, TV series. Mm-hmm. They were permitted to kind of end on their own terms, which is great. So they'll be able to wrap things up the way that they wish. And Ellen Degenerous, not so much. And now she is in her 60s now, which I didn't really realize, but uh, 
uh, made some negative news of late in how she has treated some of her staff and all of that. So that uh, certainly is an, a factor in her show ending, I am sure. And they are looking to figure out who to replace her. I know Kelly Clarkson and some other names have come up as a potential replacement. Um, but uh, and, and that actress, uh, it's in that, that TV show with Tracy uh, Morgan. Uh, you know what I'm talking about here? His, I can't, well-known actress. Anyway, she's in the running to, I'll, I'll look the name up, but okay. she was, she's, she's in the running to replace her as well. Anyway, so I'm not particularly a fan of This Is Us. Not my uh-huh. thing, uh, personally. Uh, I have watched Blackish sometimes, and I you know, kind of kick myself I don't watch it enough because you're I looking find at it, it right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, buddy. <laughs> no, but Blackish, well written and good characters. Oh. You know, terrific show. It's, it has a lot of uh, awards. Of course, This Is Us does as well. So, any thoughts on the ending of This Is Us or Blackish here, guys? Well, I'll, I'll start with yeah, I'll include Ellen as well. Um, yeah. I, I was a, used to be a huge fan of Ellen. Uh, with her with her comedy show she had and even with her uh talk show i it was funny it was it was i thought it was just a great show and then it just got out of hand i thought it was mm-hmm. ridiculous some of the subject matter that was on there especially if kids were watching it was on in the daytime um and i just thought she started getting utterly ridiculous so i stopped watching it um this is us not my thing never watched it um uh, don't plan on watching it um it's funny you said that. I have the same sentiments about Blackish. I've seen some of it, and I thought it was well written and very, very funny. I think I've mentioned on the show how I feel about Anthony Anderson. I thought he he's just an underrated talent because he's mm-hmm. so funny. Uh, he was hysterical, like movies like Barbershop, but then he played it in, in Blackish. Then he plays a dramatic role. I thought he was amazing in Law and Order. I really liked uh, the character of mm-hmm. uh, Ber- Detective Bernard in Law and Order. He was just so intense. But uh, I am ashamed that I have not watched Blackish uh, as enough uh, that I should. Um, usually I don't really get it. I have my core shows that I watch, and usually I'm too busy to watch a whole lot of shows. And, and I usually uh, wait till some shows go into syndication, and I start mm-hmm. watching them a lot, you know, because I'll, I'll, I'll just go on and on and on and watch five and six episodes at a time. But uh, definitely going to get caught up on my Blackish. Absolutely. Skinner? Yeah, the first, the, the two comedy shows, well, I guess This Is Us is not considered comedy. I We tried watching it. Uh, when it first came out, me and Marcy looked at each other and after the first episode, and we both went, that's just not us. Mm-hmm. I understand it's got a huge following. It's got many awards. Mm-hmm. There's some great actors in it. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Don't know much about it. Uh, Anthony, uh, or um, Anthony. Um, oh, uh we were just talking about one. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So versatile. I, I don't watch, I haven't watched that show. I, I'm not sure why. It's just never been one of those shows that I've uh, turned on to. But he's so versatile. And his role as Detective Bernard um, was phenomenal in Law and Order. He's got a television show that he's the um, game show host and his mom is on it. Mm-hmm. Um, can't think of the name of that show, but very funny in that too. Um it's that you got to tell who's telling a lie as far as who they are. As far as mm-hmm. uh, do you know what show I'm talking about? I yeah, can't think of the name of it. But anyway, yeah. he was he really good to at tell that. the truth. Does that what he does? Maybe that's what it is to tell the to truth. Re- and you got three people, and you have to figure yeah. out who's telling who mm-hmm. they are. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Did you guys know who where she got her start in Hollywood? Uh, I I remember seeing her on Danger Fields and some of the old HBO stage I know she, I know she used to date The Rock. <laughs> she <I> <laughs> got her first job in Hollywood with Johnny Carson. He invited her onto the set okay. of the Tonight Show. I she was the first female, <laughs> he's first female comic to ever be on the Johnny Carson show. Hmm. Oh, so I okay. thought that was a neat tidbit. Yeah, she's funny as funny as funny can be. Unfortunately, I think she got bigger than her britches, and I think that's what a lot of this is stemmed from. Um, whether it's true or not, you know, I wasn't behind behind the scenes to see all that. But if it's true, it kind of tells me she might have got a little bit bigger than what she should do. Yeah, because she, really she comes off as a real, real people person. So that's really right. sad to hear stories like that. I want to say this real quick about Blackish. Uh, I was really cool to hear, Fish, that you have watched the show. And 
uh, the dichotomy of Skinner said, I haven't watched it, this isn't us. Um, a show like that is very important because, one, to black people, uh, we understand it, it, it. We don't see enough of ourselves and the things that we go through on television, and, and, and this show like that does it. If you're a white person, I would advise watching it because – Right now, all this division that we have in the world is because we don't understand one another. And a show mm -hmm. like this helps you understand maybe a form of life that you would not know before or experience before. And it does it in a comedic way. So yeah. I would just suggest if you are white, do watch the show. It took me, uh, I, I kind of live in both worlds. You guys know my history. Um, you know, I was, I was married to two white women. I played in rock bands. So I live in, in both worlds. Um, I've heard black people say they don't watch shows like they don't like shows like Seinfeld or things like that because they don't get it. And I'm like, you're not trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not uh, Sanford and Son or the Jeff. It's a different world. But you know what? If you need one, it should help you understand well, how white people think and how they live and things like that. And I get it that it's a you could, if average black person watch Seinfeld, you wouldn't get it. I get it that the average white person would watch Blackish and didn't get it. But isn't that the whole point of it? Isn't that the whole point? Is to try to get it and understand. So that's just my little Edu educate yourself. Yeah. Yeah, good point. And you also tackled some pretty, even though it was a comedy show, they also tackled some pretty serious yeah, matters as far really as did. they had marriage trouble and they yeah. had to work through it. And, well, mm -hmm. and both, uh, both part, you know, the, the husband. The wife and the show both have successful careers and all that, and unlike the Cosbys in that respect too. So you know, mm -hmm. it's a, I agree with you. Good, good stuff there. So mm -hmm. yeah, I record it too. I record it on my DVR. I got episodes right now queued up. I just, I just need to invest more yeah. time into it. Okay, and then uh, we got just real quick here, uh, Henry Cable. We know him as uh, Superman in the uh, DC universe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't Cable. seen this, I'd, I advise. I recommend you go check it out here, but. He posted something on uh, social media not long ago where he has a new girlfriend, uh, bless her heart, you know, and and, and uh, he's excited for that relationship. Mm -hmm. And apparently he just got demolished as far as I don't know what people were saying. I'm sure there's a lot of haters out there that mm -hmm. want to probably judge who he's dating because certainly he's a well-known actor and certainly, you know, hey, let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's be honest, he's a handsome actor. He's, mm -hmm. you know, obviously he's played Superman for crying out loud. Right. So, He's in pretty good shape, you know. Yeah, uh, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And then he got all this negative comments out there. And it's like, so he posted this thing recently. And I, I advise you go check it out on his, on his social media on Twitter. And as a matter of fact, I'll post it out there too. But more or less, I'm not going to read the whole thing here. It's a little long here. But more or less what he said, very, I just thought the way he handled it was very cool. Said, listen, in so many words, if you can't be happy for me, that's fine. Live your best life. And shut up. You know, don't. Yeah, exactly. It's a very. It's like it's like an, it is the equivalent of uh, flipping people hey, the bird and smiling, yeah. if you will. But just like you know, just just live your own life, Pe man. Be happy, Pe man. People, people suck fish. I I really don't yeah. understand the evil in people's hearts. You know, you can go on a, the internet right now and Google and Google a site celebrities married to ugly spouses. <sighs> Terrible. Why is that even necessary? Right. Why do you think that spouse feels seeing something like that? You know, it, it, people are just so cruel and evil. It's just really sad. Yeah. Aspire to do love is love. Better. When right. you meet somebody and you love that person, uh, you know what? Uh, when somebody may be considered a sex symbol, meet somebody maybe not that physically attractive. I don't want to get this beauty's on the inside. Don't no, that's malark malarkey. I can't see nobody's insides. Beauty's on the outside. Okay, you can have a great personality, but beauty's on the outside. We look, we judge with our eyes. But if that person's not that attractive, you don't know why that person fell in love with that person. You know, that's I right. fell in that's, love with my first wife, and and she was great looking. I fell in love with my first wife when I saw what kind of mother she was. Yeah. That's what did it for me. So you never know. Yeah, aspire to be better and not by eating putrid meat, kids. Yeah, right. stay off my lawn. Do something <laughs> better than that. Stop hating. Love. Yeah, anyways. All, All right. right, guys, that, that's uh, we are at the uh, limit here. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here. So uh, for Mike Skinner and Keith Porter. 
Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Look for our show information on Facebook at It Came From Gen X. And again, Linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E.